Hey fragrance fans, welcome to another video from Proverbs 27, nine fragrances. Today we're gonna to be doing a video I've been looking forward to making for a long time now. And we're gonna be reviewing the reviewers today. And what we're gonna be doing is looking at some of the fragrances that are hyped among some of the internet and YouTube's most famous fragrance reviewers. And I'm going to tell you whether I think the fragrance is worth the hype or not. So if you would, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Make sure you got the notifications turned on. We upload videos every Monday and Friday. We've been doing a lot on Wednesdays and Sundays as well. So a lot of fragrant content coming out. you got to have notifications on so you'll be notified when that sweet-smelling, savory, fragrance-related content is dropped. All right? So let's get into it. Um, I'm going to try to keep it from being a super long video. So we're just going to start out. These are in no particular order. I'm just going to start with the biggest and end with the biggest. And the, so the biggest two will be uh, kind of the bookends here. And I'm going to start with uh, from Gent Sense, Ash. Ash from Gent Sense, Ashton. Uh, anyways, he, he's a great reviewer. Uh, his channel has blown up and has grown it's probably golly when i first started watching him it seemed like i mean he was one of the bigger reviewers then but it seems like he was maybe around 40 50 000, and now he's quarter of a million or something like that uh, but the fragrance that i'm going to be featuring from him is probably not uh, a shock and i figured we'd start out with one that everybody knows what the fragrance is going to be and that is halloween man x uh, and Halloween Man X is a 2019 release. I was kind of shocked. I thought it was a little bit older than that, but it's not. Um, it's described as a, a sweet, excuse me, as an amber fougere. And I think that's an appropriate um, classification for it. I would, you know, it's definitely a sweet amber fougere with coffee hints of coffee added in. Um, it's warm. It's smoky from the incense. Uh, the top notes are cardamom, lavender, and lemon. Middle notes are coffee, whiskey, cinnamon, leather, mineral notes, base notes, tonka bean, amber, and incense. And so it has that warm resinous nature from the amber, uh, from the coffee, gives it that warm nature as well. The sweetness from the tonka bean, the smokiness from the incense, uh, and then there's some nice lavender in there. You know, that's what makes it a fougere, and it, it really is um, an interesting, it's a, it's a modern fougere fragrance. So the question is, is it worth all the hype? Is it worth him featuring it in probably 30 to 50 videos? Yes. Yeah, it is. It's it's definitely worth the hype. I didn't think it would be. It was one of those fragrances when I got it that I thought, you know, I was expecting it to be not as good as he said. And that's the thing about my list here. It's kind of the ones that I bought because of their hype, okay? And so not necessarily the ones they all hype the most, but ones that I bought because of their hype. And although I didn't start wearing it immediately when I first got it, I did like it, and as my fragrance um, experience changed and opened up, it was one I started wearing a whole bunch of, especially in cold weather time. So, yeah, first one, definitely worth the hype. All right, our next um, fragrance reviewer is going to be uh, from Max Forty, and Max is another you know all these guys are um, and these are the guys that i watch and it kind of got me into the community and the fragrance that i'm going to be featuring from max again is probably not a shock to anyone we're starting off with a couple of softball lobs here and it's from the house of dolce and gabbana and it's poor ohm and um poor ohm i was it's another one i was surprised that, that it's not older than it was it's a 2012 release um, it's, it's, again, it's an aromatic fougere. 
And the top notes is citruses, bergamot, neroli, mandarin orange. Middle notes are lavender, sage, pepper. Base notes, tobacco, tonka, cedar. This is one of them that when I got it, I got the current formulation. I had bought what was supposed to be, no, I got the current formulation. Then I realized by watching other videos that he didn't like the current formulation. He loved the old one. So I bought off eBay what was supposed to be a vintage, you know, uh, 2012, one, one with a sticker. And it didn't smell any different to me than this one. So I, honestly, I think that they probably was, it was somebody that was selling, putting on there that they were selling the vintage with the sticker and they were actually just putting in the, the new juice in it because obviously those bottles with the stickers are selling for a lot more money and that guy just was just dishonest. That's what I think happened. Um, because again, it didn't smell different enough for me to think it was, you know, the same fragrance that Max was hyping. Now I will say that it has greatly grown on me and as my olfactorative, um, you know, likes and dislikes has opened up and changed. Um, I do like this fragrance now. Question is, is it worth the hype? And the answer is undecided. Yeah, I'm going to throw a little curveball here because honestly, I haven't smelled the fragrance yet that Max is hyping. Um, you know, I've got the current formulation sitting right here and he doesn't hype it. In fact, he, he's disappointed in it as well. So until I get a bottle with the, you know, or at least a sample from a bottle with a sticker, and hey, if any of my listeners would like, if, they, if you've got uh, the older formulation and you can, you have a way to send me a decant so I can smell it, man, I'll, I'll thank you on one of my videos and I'll even do a review of the old one and compare it to the new one. That would be awesome. Just reach out to me. So undecided on that one. All right, let's go to another one now from Stay Fresh Productions, Justin Copeland. Probably again, not a shocker, John Varvatos Vintage. Vintage is a 2006 release. It's described as a woody Sheepra. Now, Sheepra is a fragrance family that is described or constructed with a citrus top, a floral mid, and a moss base. So that's the way a, a sheepress fragrance is, you know, classically constructed. Citrus on top, a floral mid, and a mossy base. When watching Justin, and I really like Justin, and I like watching when... Um, his wife or girlfriend is on there with him. I really love to see them. They got awesome chemistry. And um, I even like it when her sister comes on because she always has a different uh, opinion, you know, and, it, that, and it's kind of neat because you got kind of like a, uh, you know, three levels of experience with fragrances there. But I really, ex you know, thought that this fragrance was going to be different than it was. Um, with it being a woody Sheepra, you know, you would think of adding the woods to a classical Sheepra. Top notes here are rhubarb, quince, wormwood, fennel, all of which are sour or pungent notes. The mid is lavender, cinnamon, juniper, orris root, jasmine. So you've got some florals in the mid. The base note is, is uh, tobacco, suede, balsam fir, tonka, oak moss, wood, patchouli. So it's definitely a... Uh, Sheepra, a woody Sheepra, with some other kind of unique nuances thrown in to it as well. But the question is, is it worth the hype? And the answer is absolutely not. This is a good, it is a good fragrance. It's not a great fragrance. There's nothing, it's unique but it's not special. And to me, if you're gonna hype a fragrance, it really needs to be special. It needs to have a really good smell to it. I mean, that's the whole point of fragrances. It's not just 
how weird can something be or how unique can it be? Being unique is, uh, it's okay. That's, you know, but to hype it as one of your favorite fragrances and it has this kind of pungent top instead of a nice bright citrus top, which you uh, would typically get in a Shepra. Um, it just doesn't do it for me. So is John Barbatos Vintage worth the hype? No. All right, our next reviewer is another one of the big three, and that is the only female reviewer on the list that I have, and I know there's a lot of other, other ones, and maybe even a lot that are bigger channels than what I'm presenting here, but again, these are the ones that I watch and that have influenced me. And um, this next reviewer was one of the very first ones that I saw a video for on YouTube. Don't know how, I don't even know how this genre was introduced to me through YouTube's magical algorithm, but it was one day and I've come across a Demi Rawling video. And I've, I'm grateful for it because Demi Rawling introduced me to one of my all time favorite fragrances, and that is Bottega Veneta Pour Homme Parfum. Um, it's exquisite, but the one that I'm going to be talking about, probably her most hyped men's designer fragrance is from the house of Terra de Hermes, excuse me, from the house of Hermes, botched that, didn't I? Terra de Hermes, 2006 release. Terra de Hermes is a woody, spicy fragrance. The top notes are orange and grapefruit. Although I don't remember grapefruit being listed as a as a an original note here. I don't know if that's something that Fragranic has thrown in or if that is an original. If you know, let me know. Middle notes are listed as pepper and pelagonium. Don't even know what that is. Base notes vetiver, cedar, patchouli, benzoin. And so basically in this you get orange, pepper, and vetiver. You know, with a little cedar, you can smell it, a little patchouli if you got a real trained nose. But the main three things that are going to stick out to you is the orange, the spicy pepper, and the and the vetiver. And it's been described as a dirty orange and kind of a dirty vetiver and and all that. And you know, one of my first fragrances that I fell in love with when I that that really got me into the fragrance uh, community was Tom Ford's Gray Vetiver. And as I was looking for other vetiver fragrances, I bought Guerlain's vetiver and I bought Hermes's Terra de Hermes. Um, and they're really so far apart. It was blowing my mind when I was buying these different fragrances, thinking that they'd all smell the same. And then when they smell so different, I was looking for other, I was just looking for basic, subtly different gray vetivers. Not sure why, but that's what I was doing. I'm just being honest with you. When I'd buy a new blue fragrance, I was looking just for a, just a slightly different Dior Sauvage, you know. I mean, I was just a frag, you know, freshman. Um, the question is, is Terra de Hermes worth the hype? Because it's not just Demi Rawlings that has hyped this fragrance. It's been a lot of fragrance reviewers. The answer is, yes, <laughs> it absolutely is. Terra de Hermes is a classic fragrance. Um, you know, with it, you know, it gets this reputation as having this dirtiness to it, but to me, it, it, it smells fresh and clean. And, you know, I mean, I understand what they're saying, but I've never smelled and thought, ooh, that smells dirty, you know. Um, it is a classic gentleman's spicy, just citrusy vetiver, just put on a suit you can wear it to the boardroom. You could wear it to a wedding. Uh, you could wear it any, t you know, from black tie to black suede jacket or black leather jacket. You could wear this fragrance. It's never going to smell outdated. Um, it is worth the hype. All right. Next on the list. He's known as the perfume guy. Smells good. What was the name of his channel 
I mean, it's just recently changed to the perfume guy. It looks good, smells good, something like that. Anyways, we're talking about Sebastian, the perfume guy. And Sebastian has a unique um, take on fragrances. I don't think that me and him really, I, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of confused about everybody. It seems like there's some that we really like the same fragrance and sometimes we really don't. Um, but one thing that me and Sebastian share is a love for Guerlain or Guerlain. Um, we both really love Guerlain as a house. And the fragrance that he has hyped the most from them is L'Instant de Guerlain. And that is Lidge. And Lidge was a 2005 release. Top notes are star anise, citruses, elemi, tea, jasmine, neroli, cacao, patchouli, sandalwood, Virginia cedar, and hibiscus. I don't know if I said top notes, but that was all the notes there. So a lot going on. It's the, the chocolatey, licorice-y, a little citrusy, a little bit floral, you know. Um, it's a woody spicy is how it is, you know, listed on Fragranica. But I would, I would list it as an amber floral. Um, that, you know, that Elemy resin that's in the top, it really stays throughout. And once it dries down, you get that nice creamy, um, kind of chocolatey, patchouli, sandalwood, you know, thing going. But the, the resin stays. Uh, I, I would call it an amber floral because you've got the nice jasmine and neroli and hibiscus notes. I don't detect a lot of the tea. I don't like tea and fragrances. And I don't, it's not prominent enough to, to where it turns me off. The question is, Lidge with the brown sides and the three hundred dollar, you know, price tag on that particular bottle. To have a nickname in the community, Lidge, where you, your fragrance is known by that, is it worth the hype? And the answer is out absolutely. Or not absolutely, but no. I don't think it is. And that was hard for me to come to that decision because I like the fragrance. I don't find myself reaching for it that often. And if I'm not going to grab it and spray it on and wear it, I don't think it's really worth the hype to be hyped as this, this monolith in the fragrance community. Lidge, you know, Lidge has its cult following like Aventus has its mainstream following, you know. And again, although it is a really nice smelling fragrance, I don't think it deserves quite the hype that it gets because most people that I have come in contact with buy it based on the hype and then are immediately let down. All right, next on the list from Fragmental, it's Chris. Our happy British, um, very chic presenter always has had at least since I've been watching him, he's always had a really um, high quality production to his fragrance content. I'm sure he started out like all of us with, you know, lower quality and all that. And just like, you know, I still am stuck on recording on my iPhone. But the fragrance that he has hyped the most to me from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier, and it's Le Mal. And I'm going to go with the original, the OG. Um, he said it was his most worn fragrance for probably 10 years, you know, during his most formative years of, you know, late high school and college and all that. It was his go-to, his everyday scent, his signature scent. It's a 1995 fragrance. It was, it was formulated by Francis Kirchhoff, who obviously is famous for his own pro productions of like Baccarat Rouge 540 and now is the in-house perfumer at Dior, which I'm excited to see uh, what he comes out with first from, from that company. 
Lamal is an amber fougere. The notes, top notes are lavender, mint, cardamom, bergamot, and artemisia. Middle notes are cinnamon, orange blossom, and caraway. And the base notes are vanilla, tonka, amber, sandalwood, and cedar. It's described as an amber fougere, but I would classify it more as an oriental fougere. There is that an amber, you know, in the base, but the way the base has that combination of vanilla, tonka, amber, sandalwood, and cedar, those are all these really creamy, rich, sweet, wide, you know, vanillic style notes that I just associate more with an oriental fragrance. Um, you know, the first time I smelled them all, I didn't care for it. I thought it was too different. Um, so the question is, is it worth all the hype that it has received and all of its flankers have received? The answer is yeah. I mean, it really changed the fragrance industry. I mean, it really did. You know, when you think about what Aqua Digio did with the citrus aquatics, you know, Lamal did that with the, the, the idea of making a fougere, a lavender-based fragrance, but really marrying a fougere, the fougere with the oriental, you know, fragrance families, marrying those together, inserting another fragrance family and putting those, that amber and that resin in there, making this really sweet, rich, um, Changing what masculine fragrances could smell like, I think is what Lamal did. And I think it I think it's worth the hype for it. It's the OG, it's the originator. Um, or if it wasn't the first, at least it was the loudest, you know. You think about the lines that are popular right now with the Zara Wanted and you, you know, um, all of these ambery, sweet, you know, Halloween Man X, it's already been on the list. Mercedes Club Black. Um, all these real sweet, ambery fragrances. You really can just bring that back to Lamal. So, yeah, I think it's worth, I think it's absolutely worth the hype. All right, let's go to our next reviewer. And um, we've got to hurry here. We're going to go with Mr. Smelly, 1977, also known as Dan Naughton, the guitar uh, teacher from across the pond in England. This is also one of Max Forte's favorite fragrances, but um, this is definitely one that I learned about from Mr. Smelly. And he's, you know, he's hopped quite a few fragrances, but the one that I want to present to you is the one that I've heard the most from, and that is Dior O Sauvage. He was the first one to let me know that Dior Sauvage didn't was not the the OG. That there was a a little old fragrance from back in 1966 um, called O Sauvage that was the real Sauvage from the house of Dior. It's a citrus aromatic. To me, it is a textbook. Shepra. I don't know why it's classified as a citrus aromatic. It is citrusy and it is aromatic, but it is a textbook Shepra. Again, a Shepra top notes are citrus, check. Mid notes are floral, check. Base notes is moss, uh, check. So it, it's a it's a Shepra. The notes here, lemon, bergamot, basil, rosemary, caraway, fruity notes. Mid notes are jasmine, coriander, carnation, patchouli, Orris root, sandalwood, rose. The base notes are oak moss, vetiver, musk, and amber. And again, this is the current formulation. And the question is, though, is it worth the hype? Because this is an this is one that is hyped by a lot of guys that really like old school fragrances. You know, uh, Chris from Scentland, and uh, you know, folks like that that like older school uh, fragrances. Is it worth the hype? 
Yeah, I mean, it's worth the hype and more. It's one of the best smelling citrus fragrances that you'll ever smell in your life. The opening, the citrus opening alone is worth buying it. If all it was was a cologne that you could wear in the high heat of summer and it didn't have the all the florals and all the the you know woody mossy base to it if all it was was just that melange of citrus on the top it'd be worth buying but it but it's worth it, you know has so much more uh with those absolute exquisite florals that come in highlighted by the jasmine that smells like honeysuckle and then it dries down with this oak moss and vetiver musk and amber but the vetiver is really the star there it's just really one of my favorite all-time fragrances. So it's worth the hype. Two more. Two more. Let's go with the Fragrance Apprentice named George. George is one of my favorite reviewers. Um, I love the cinematography in his more epic videos. He's not one that I think me and him would like each other's fragrances. To me, he likes a, a lot of more modern unisex fragrances, things that he thinks are very masculine. A lot of times I think are very unisex. Seems like the things he thinks are unisex, I think are more more classically feminine. Um, so I'm not sure we would be trading fragrance pals, but, but he has turned me on to some really good fragrances. And Although he's, you know, his most hyped fragrances, things like Millicene and Pure Imperial, um, Dior Homme, which we both love. But the one I want to bring to your attention is one of his newer hype fragrances, and that is from the house of Givenchy, and it's Gentleman Cologne. And uh, Gentleman Cologne's a 2019 release, it's described as a woody aromatic. To me, I would call it a citrus aromatic. Um, the note listing here is bergamot, lemon, pettigrain. Mid notes are iris, vetiver, rosemary, base notes, and broxen and musk. And this is one of those citrusy summertime fragrances like I just talked about if, if Eau Sauvage was, you know, just a linear scent that didn't do anything, just had those top notes. Generally, Givenchy Cologne is kind of that way. It's kind of in that Dior on cologne fragrance family and style and so the question is is it worth the hype and the answer is no i don't like it at all i mean i, I won't say i don't like it at all i just don't like it near as much as george george what's going on george is hyping this thing saying it's the you know basically the replacement to dior own cologne and to compare this fragrance to Dior Homme Cologne is like comparing a nice, cool glass of fresh-made, homemade lemonade on a hot summer day where the, the condensation's on the outside of the cup and you've got a little mint leaf stuck in there. It's like comparing that to a room-temperature glass of too sweet Kool-Aid that you got from a trailer park. And in this situation, Dior on Cologne is the lemonade and Givenchy Gentleman Cologne is the trailer park Kool-Aid. And I say that kind of in an oxymoron because honestly, between the two, Givenchy Gentleman Cologne is the more complex fragrance. It just don't smell near as good. And just like there's probably a lot more ingredients in Kool-Aid because there's a lot of preservatives and a lot of fake stuff in it. You just can't beat lemons, water, and sugar, you know? Um, and so to compare those two fragrances, they, they just don't compare. And Givenchy Gentleman Cologne is not worth the hype. And unless you really like the original Givenchy Gentleman and that line, don't buy the cologne. It don't smell enough different uh, to, you know, just pay the extra money and buy Dior own cologne. All right, let's go on to our last reviewer. I told you we was booking in, bookending. 
Uh, this by the, the two big dogs. We started with Ash from Gen Sense. We're gonna end with everybody's favorite fragrance reviewer, especially in Fragcom. That is Mr. Fragrance One, Mr. German model sensation, boy band singing, TikTok crazy, Jeremy Fragrance. And Jeremy has hyped a lot of fragrances. I'm not gonna talk about YSL La Nuit de Lome. I'm not gonna talk about Mont Blanc Individuel. I'm not gonna talk about Creed Aventus or even Office for Men, but Jeremy's newest hype train is rolling down the tracks out in the country in lower Alabama. It's the most obscure train track ride from the House of Versace, a 1994 release, and it's Versace Blue Jeans. Versace Blue Jeans is classified as an aromatic fougere, and it has an impressive note listing. Citruses, bergamot, juniper, anise, Brazilian rosewood, basil, lavender, rose, carnation, heliotrope, jasmine, geranium, sage, fir, lily of the valley, vanilla, tonka, sandalwood, iris, musk, amber, vetiver, cedar, patchouli. You'd be thinking I was reading you the note listing for one of Guerlain's classics, you know, Habit Rouge or something like that. But no, this is Versace Dillon blue jeans. And I'm telling you that none of those notes are distinguishable. It smells like something between a fabric softener and a cheap drugstore fragrance. Is it worth the hype? Yeah, no, it's not. I was joking. It's not. It's it. What? What? Versace blue jeans? This, this is, I don't understand Jeremy sometimes. It's, are you getting kickbacks? Is Versace like Jeremy? We'll give you $1 million. You tell everybody that our worst fragrance is really good. Because look, Versace's got a lot of good fragrances. Versace Pour On is a nice fragrance. You know, Versace Dillon Blue is a great fragrance. Versace Oud Noir, great fragrance. I mean, so many different fragrances you could be hyping, and you're hyping something that that literally smells like it was made from the house of Cody or Dana or or you know L'Oreal or somebody like that. I don't know. So the point is, the reviewers are not always right. Look, I'm not always right, and you're you're gonna smell things that I say is great that you're gonna go, man, I don't really. This guy at Proverbs 27, 9, don't know what he's talking about. Fragrances, we all, I'm convinced that everybody's nose smells different things. I think there's things that you can smell that I can't, literally cannot smell it because our noses are sensitive and to, to different things. So we love talking about them. Please keep watching. Please keep, you know, it, it's an enjoyable for me. It's enjoyable for you, but don't get mad at the reviewers when they say something's great and then you hate it because honestly, this stuff is all so subjective. But it's so enjoyable. Let's keep talking about it. Let's keep reviewing them. All right, guys. Y'all like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Until we see you down the road, we say God bless and frag on, frag fam.